This is Daily Armenia, Civil Net's Daily News Digest. Here are today's top stories from Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region. Nagorno-Karabakh President Araik Harutunyan said today he will resign tomorrow, putting an end to weeks of swirling speculation over the embattled leader's political future. Continued international inaction around Azerbaijan's ongoing blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh suggests there is a need to change our approaches and steps and show flexibility, Harutunyan wrote on Facebook. He continued, To achieve that, we need to change the main actors in Artsakh, starting with me. Under Nagorno-Karabakh law, the region's legislature is required to convene within 7 to 10 days to select a new interim president who is expected to serve out the rest of Harutunyan's term until 2025. There will not be a general election. In related news, earlier today, Harutunyan dismissed Gurgen Nersisyan from the post of Nagorno-Karabakh state minister, akin to prime minister, and replaced him with Samvel Shahramanyan, formerly the head of the region's security council. Harutunyan indicated he granted Shahramanyan broad powers, but did not immediately clarify what that would mean in practice. In other major news from Nagorno-Karabakh, Russia has reportedly replaced the head of its peacekeeping forces in the region. Armenian media reported today Major General Kirill Kulakov will replace Colonel General Alexander Lentsov, who had led the peacekeepers since April. Russia's defense ministry has not yet commented on the matter, and CivilNet has not been able to independently confirm the news. Kulakov would be the peacekeepers' fifth leader in just three years. In the Russian military, a major general ranks below a colonel general, meaning the peacekeepers' new commander would be less senior than his predecessor. In other Russian news, today the spokesperson for Armenia's foreign ministry issued a rare rebuttal of remarks made by her Russian counterpart, who said yesterday responsibility for Azerbaijan's ongoing blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh rests with Armenia. Asked about Azerbaijan's move to detain three young men from Nagorno-Karabakh earlier this week, Russia's Maria Zaharova told reporters the current situation in the Lachin Corridor was the result of Armenia's recognition of Nagorno-Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan's territory. She continued, In this context, we consider it inappropriate, wrong, and unjustified to lay responsibility on the Russian peacekeeping contingent. The peacekeepers were escorting the young men through Azerbaijan's checkpoint on the Lachin Corridor when they were detained, and reportedly did not try to intervene. In response, Armenia's Ani Badalyan said Zaharova's comments caused confusion and disappointment and called on Russia to refrain from further complicating the situation. Earlier this year, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan set off a political firestorm in Armenia when he told reporters he is prepared to recognize Azerbaijan's claims to Nagorno-Karabakh, provided that guarantees are made for the rights and security of the region's Armenians. You can also check out CivilNet's latest podcast with analyst and commentator Eric Hakopian, who joined us to discuss Azerbaijan's more than eight-month blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh and the great power politics being played at the expense of the region's roughly 120,000 Armenians. The full episode is up now on our website and YouTube channel. Finally, the CivilNet number of the day is 20,000. That's the rough number of students in Nagorno-Karabakh whose access to education has been severely disrupted by Azerbaijan's blockade, according to the latest report from Nagorno-Karabakh's Human Rights Defender's Office. The new school year in both Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia starts tomorrow. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground in Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region.